Okay. I have. All right, so today we are going to talk about the SF package for spatial vector data. Um, so simple features, which is uh, what SF stands for. It is a formal standard um, to describe how objects in the real world can be represented in computers with an emphasis on the spatial geometry. Um, and this is an explanation that I found in uh, the first vignette of the SF package. And, um, all geometries are composed of points uh, and they are coordinates in a two, three or four dimensional space. So to make this a bit more um, specific, uh, the seven most common types are listed here. Uh, it is uh, this, this list. And so you have a point, a line string, which is a sequence of points which are connected, uh, a polygon, which is also a sequence of, sequence of points, but they form a closed ring, which is not self-intersecting. And so it must be somehow round or uh, closing. Um, and there can be extra rings inside that denote holes inside the polygon. They also make part of the polygon. Then you have the multiplication, let's say. Uh, so you have multi-point, multi-line string, and multi-polygon, which are still uh, regarded as single entity, simple feature, but they are compounds. So the, one set of points, one set of line strings, one set of polygons, it's contain, it's uh, what consists uh, of this. And then you have a very general type, it's the geometry collection, which is a set of geometries of any type. All right. Let's make it um, more visual. So, the package is F, we can use it to read, manipulate, and write simple features in R. Um, so we can install it with install.packages.sf. And here we read a shapefile, which is included in the SF package. Um, and first we have to specify where it is. And with the system.file function, we can say, okay, that is where the file is. So file path, it, is, it contains the full path. And reading it, it is with the read underscore sf function. You can also use the st underscore read function, which is actually in the book. Um, but then by default, it will output a little more messages. Uh, so the book uses quiet is true. Um, you can also pass as table is true to get a table instead of a data frame. The table is a little more um, fancy data frame, so to say. And um, so what read as F does, it is already use these um, arguments as a default. So it is quite convenient to use to use read as F because it doesn't it doesn't um, throw the messages and it returns. Uh, table like uh, SF object. So the documentation of the data sets, um, well, it is, there is a short documentation in the SF package, but it refers indirectly. If you look further, uh, this link will uh, contain the full um, documentation with the, um, yeah, with the explanation of all the, um, columns that are inside. So as you can see here. Um, so one that we can notice um, FIPS is the county ID. So the North Carolina data set, it's about uh, sudden infant deaths, which is the SID um, abbreviation in North Carolina in the 70s for two periods. So there's the uh, frequency, I think, uh, for that. And uh, well, is the number. Uh, oh, it's this sit deaths uh, in a period 74 78 it sits 74 and then you have the same for sit 79 i think those measures are often used in examples and uh, perhaps not so much in the book but throughout literature um all right so that's about data sets so how does it look like if we just print it uh, it says it says 
simple feature collection, 100 features, 14 fields, geometry type multipolygon, which means that each row consists of a multipolygon, um, which can actually be a single polygon, but uh, wrapped as a, a multipolygon. Dimension XY means it's two dimensional, so it's a planar bounding box, uh, the minimum and maximum uh, y value, x and y values. The geodetic, well, the Gornet reference system is geodetic, which means it's a geographic uh, CRS, so it's a, it's a longitude, latitude, and the, um, the name of it is NAD27, which is often used um, in the United States, but it is. It uses another geodetic datum than, uh, for, for example, the WGS84. It's also longitude latitude. So, and here it is, it says a table. So, which is a data frame of 100 rows, 15 columns. We have those several columns, which we just saw in the documentation. It, it just prints the first 10 rows and it says there are 90 more rows. And not all variables are present as well in this, uh, print method of a table. So um, the remaining ones also contain a geometry, which is the multipolygon uh, representation. We will see that a bit later, how that looks like. Uh, well, we can also use the function glimpse from dplyr to um, print this in another way uh, and see like this, how the values are like for each column. So the columns here are printed below each other. So here we can also see uh, geometry and the first, which is of type multipolygon. This is of type double, for example, type integer. integer. And here you see the first multipolygon and coordinates uh, emerging, but it, it's still uh, long and so it is abbreviated. Um, let's extract the geometry column. We have the function st geometry in SF, uh, which really extracts that single column. Um, it's still of a special type, so uh, SF can recognize this as a special class. It's a geometry set of 100 for 100 features, so the geometry type is polygon. I mentioned bounding box CRS. Those are those are all um, parts in effect of the geometry column itself. So the, those are all retained when we just extracted ST geometry. Uh, so when the first five geometries are then by default uh, printed, but not in full again, because it's so many coordinates. This is just a print method. Um, and well, so what, what we created there was NC underscore geom, but if you just, um, um, take the geometry column directly from the NC um, as F objects, it's just the same. So which is uh, proven here. So NC is an SF object. It has also these classes, but it is the, the major class of SF. For NC geom, it is FSC underscore multipolygon, that's a type, but more generally it's an FSC object. So classes F, is actually a data frame with rows which represent the simple features and columns which represent attributes, plus also a sticky geometry column. It is sticky because if you do data frame selections, it will remain there just to maintain the SF uh, character of the data frame. You have to do more to get rid of it. Um, so the class is it's a geometry column, and it is essentially a list column. It is a list. So, which means the R object type list, so the class, the list class, a list of the geometries of the simple features. And for example, we can take the eight element. So, this is uh, extracting an element of a list, uh, this double bracket. So, we take the eight geometry and then we get the geometry in full. So, here we literally see um, between each pair of commas two coordinates, which is one point. So we here we see all the coordinates of a simple polygon, in fact, but it is set as multi-polygon. And I guess that's why there are so many brackets, um, parentheses uh, around it. So if we 
Um, then ask what is the class of such uh, geometry elements? Well, it says it is an SFG class, and that is a geometry of a single feature. So then, so we, that's the single entity. So you have the geometry of a single feature. You can combine it into lists, and that represents the list column, the SFC object. This is a geometry column, and then combine it with more attributes and you have a complete SF object. So those three classes are important. So SFG, SFC, and SF. Um, if you drop the geometry column, you have the function ST drop geometry, then you get just a table, a data frame like that. You can also return the coordinates reference system with the ST CRS function um, like this. And the documentation says, well, on the object that you get, this is a CRS object, you can um, use methods with the dollar sign and they, they are, they, they are um, listed here. So we can um, try a few, just for example, like name and so on. Uh, so the name, it's NAD27, EPSG code, it's uh, 4,267, which uh, is the identifier actually in the EPSG database of um, coordinate reference systems. And the more formal complete definition uh, is given by the so-called WKT string. That's the well-known text string, which is the OGC standard to represent the coordinate reference system. So if we do that, and I use the function cat around it just to break it down in multiple lines, because otherwise, Otherwise, it shows the um, line breaks in a single string. And that's not so readable, so this is much prettier. So here you have WKT notation of the entire coordinate reference system. So it says with this string, it uh, already defines that as a geographical and not a projected uh, CRS. That's the name. That's the geodetic datum that is used. Inside the geodetic datum is the definition of the ellipsoid. Also the unit, which is meter. Um, it uses the Greenwich prime meridian, and it also says which type of coordinate system is used. It's uh, an ellipsoidal coordinate system with first axis is latitude, and then second axis is longitude. And uh, it also has angle units. Um, so, and this is the ID. So it's uh, the authority is EPSG because there are also other uh, authorities, but this is the most important one and that's the ID number of it. So that's the complete definition, which you get also if you just print uh, NC underscore CRS and nothing more, it will uh, give a few extra things, but also include this um, WKT string. You can, uh, for each SF object, return point coordinates, just like a matrix, in fact. Um, so it is a matrix, and it's a long matrix because it's multi-polygons with many, many points which define each polygon. Um, but essentially, it has uh, X and Y coordinates, and there are L1, L2, L3 columns. This is the first six rows. When we look at the last six rows, it's a high number here. We can see that L3 is indeed uh, the column that points to which sim simple feature we are looking at. So these are points from the, hun the hundredth, uh, the hundredth uh, feature. And so in the documentation, it says that L1 refers to the main ring. In the case of a multi-polygon, L1 refers to the main ring. L2 refers to the um, yeah to, to the ring ID in the multi-polygon. So I guess this is, if in case of a multi-polygon, this will say uh, which the number or the, the rank of the polygon inside the multi-polygon. And then this says uh, which simple feature it belongs to. Uh, while this will distinguish between the outer ring and the holes of one polygon. So that's how it's decomposed. This is already the more complex case, of course. In the case of points, you just simply don't need those extra columns. It's X, Y. Okay. Um, static maps, it's not really 
uh, in fact, it's, um, it's the topic of a future chapter, but I want to show or at least give a little taste about it here because um, it is used already in the chapter and so it's good to, to have a bit uh, feeling with it. So, um, so with ggplot2, you can just, uh, because plots can also, maps can also be regarded as graphs. They can be plotted as a ggplot graph and there's a special geom, geomsf, which can be used um, to plot, um, yeah, to plot maps. So the theme black and white just uh, avoids uh, the gray background, which is the default in ggplot uh, graphs. So you can also see that uh, there's, it's also part of the geom sf um, geom that there is a nice um, awareness about the fact that it's a coordinate reference system. So you for a geographic CRS, it is uh, shown that these are latitudes and longitudes. Mm. All right. So another example, which also has labels, geom sf label, it's. Um, it shows these uh, nice labels. If you pass, uh, if you also say which column has to be used as the label, then it can uh, show this. And well, if I would not have put quart as F, it would have zoomed out to the whole. But then there were quite there are quite a lot of counties, one hundred, and with the labels, it is a. Uh, more of a mess, um, perhaps with overlaps or perhaps with um, labels not shown, I don't know. But so that's uh, why I have um, zoomed in like this. With quarters F, you can really zoom in. It's a static zoom, but it is uh, defined. You can also make interactive maps, which is also present in the chapter with map view. Um, let's first, um, yeah, show some points with map view so that we can also um, see something extra. Um, so the ST sample function, it samples points on spatial feature and returns an SFC class of, of uh, the type point. Um, but map view needs an SF object, so we will use the function ST as SF to do that. So to upgrade something uh, to an SF object, we use ST as SF. So let's first sample with ST sample um, from the simple feature objects in C um, with size 10. So if you have any questions, please interrupt me. It's no problem. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, uh, yeah, I have a question about this part. So is it actually possible? So within um, this NC, there are a lot of regions, right? Is it possible to sample according to the regions, like making a group by and then sample? Well, that's a good question. Uh, frankly, I don't know uh, for sure, but perhaps let's have a look in um, in in the documentation, right? So samples points on or in sets of spatial features. Mm. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be any option now. No, yeah, not yet. By polygon is not directly what you would use. So I guess that you would have to force it to do so. For example, by indeed using by polygon. Uh, and say it, I want one for each polygon and restrain, or just not by polygon, not use by polygon, but just restrain at least the parts which you want samples in um, by filtering the SF object. That would be one approach. Okay. Um, and you can also vectorize that if you want to distinguish mm -hmm. distinguish all zones uh, for which you want samples. No, it doesn't really um, do it like that. Maybe you can group it first. You have a new data frame, group it by, I don't know, years or, mm. and then 
camp for them. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can uh, use a groups and then join them to the SF object, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you can. That would be a, a little maybe exercise, you, I think. Maybe yeah. we need to transform into a data frame and then mm -hmm. it back as a simple feature. Do you have mm -hmm. to build a new data set, a new simple feature after you group it, and then you can come. Yeah, yeah, that might be possible. Yeah, I'm sure there are many other, several ways to do so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, we, so we had made NC points uh, because we had made a sample and then uh, converted it to do an uh, SF object. Uh, so NC points now. Um, we can plot it with uh, map view and so what, uh, what I'm doing here, it's first plotting the NC object and then as a second layer, um, plot the NC points. And well, we can provide some colors and uh, add the label which, which has to pop up if we hover abo above the, uh, on top of the counties. So if we, we can zoom in, that's the nice thing of the interactive plot. If we click on it, we get the attributes of the feature that we have um, clicked and um, yeah there's there's also just about the points um, there's not uh, there's actually no attributes here because um, and there's just the geometry column for the points so but that's a nice that's a nice thing uh, about map view um we can uh, have a look at Another um, ST coordinates example, if we look at the NC points, uh, we see it's indeed all points. Uh, that's what ST geometry type can tell us. Uh, and it uh, supports 18 uh, different um, yeah, geometry types. So that's all the, the levels. So it's, it's a factor. And um, the SD coordinates function, well, as said already, for points, it will just show you X and Y uh, coordinates, but that's how you can extract it as a matrix. Then writing an SF object to a file, um, we can use that. We can do that with the SD write function. Um, let's create a temporary file with the GeoJSON uh, extension and then use SD write on the S NC points. Um, Object, so it will uh, tell that it is writing the layer to uh, JSON using the GDO driver GeoJSON, and we can read it back in with ST read. So, simple feature can be subsetted. Uh, I want to pay special attention to it. It is used in the chapter. Um, I have uh, looked into it a little bit more. So based on the SF documentation, we can see that um, there's a special method for SF objects uh, to use the brackets, um, which have as the first two arguments, the row selection and the column selection. Uh, just like in data frame. So you can just extract rows and columns based on non-spatial criteria and get an SF object back that is reduced in size. But uh, you can also pass uh, for the, as a first uh, argument in the uh, brackets, an SF object um, to filter, spatially filter uh, the outer object. And it uses the OP argument, which is a function. So it's a geometrical binary predicate function to apply when I is a simple feature object. So it means, that's how um, I should be related, the features of I should be related to the features of X and how they should interact with X to reduce X. That's uh, actually uh, what this means. Um, you can also, so for example, that's, uh, well, you can use it always, I think, but so the drop, um, arguments, it says, uh, or it tells whether to drop the geometry column or not. So 
default is false, which means it will remain an SF object. But if you set it explicitly as true, um, it will drop the geometry column and hence return the data frame. So we can subset using non-spatial criteria or using spatial criteria with another SF object. So let's have a look. Uh, we can um, subset uh, like this, the first row. What we get is still a complete simple feature collection, but just with one row and all attributes and the geometry column. Um, we can pass, for example, uh, a logical vector, which is uh, made here by this comparison, um, which means we want the row with the name hash. And we get another uh, SF object with one row. Um, well, here we also take one row, but we select just one attribute column. What is the result of that? We have the one attribute column, but also the geometry column, which is the default because it's default is drop is false. So it uh, just retains the geometry column, which is sticky. Um, when we say drop is true, um, then we get um, just the number 10 because that is what was in here. So uh, this really, returns us the um, scalar 10, uh, the numeric, and that uh, because also the geometry is dropped. So another um, application, it's um, to filter for the FIPS, it's the county ID, uh, and say, well, we want them all except these two. So we don't want, which is expressed by this uh, exclamation mark, we don't want the ones with these numbers. Um, so we filtered it like this. But so we actually get uh, still the NC, but with 98 rows instead of 100. And we can plot it with ggplot like this. And we have uh, given uh, another um, column uh, value to, to show the as a color for the polygons. It's, uh, this is an example from the book, except that the book makes this a little bit uh, more complicated, let's say, because the book um, derives numerical indices with the function which, which is actually not even because you can just uh, pass the result of the comparison itself. It's uh, a logical vector. Like this. So um, then let's subset with spatial criteria. Uh, which is actually why I needed these two objects uh, as well to, to, to perform this. So let's um, reduce North Carolina as an object with the, I guess, 10 points uh, that we have sampled. Um, so what we then get is the North Carolina subset, 10 features, 14 fields. So these are the 10 counties which were intersected by the 10 points. This. And let's uh, plot it. So with ggplot, we use the NC subset and the NC points. So here we can effectively see which counties uh, were selected. Uh, and we can indeed verify that these were the counties which were intersected by the points. Then. Uh, another topic which is also present in the book, it is generating as F objects. Um, up to now, we have just played a bit and uh, tried to gain more insight in uh, how they are composed. Generating them, um, when we already have a data object, like a data frame, we can convert do conversion with ST as a F. Let's assume that we have a table like this with the name, longitude, latitude, and some value of a variable. Then we can do SDSSF, pass the, um, the data frame, specify which columns constitute uh, X and Y, the or easting, northing um, values, and also pass the coordinates reference system. Uh, it's not obliged, but Anyway, in practical, in real situations, you will always need to do, to specify the coordinates reference system. So that's been done, done here. So you really get uh, a nice SF object as a result, which you can then plot and intersect and uh, whatever. 
We can also start from scratch, uh, create geometries from coordinate factors or matrices with uh, the, these functions, which really creates um, SFG objects, so geometry objects, then combine them into an SFC object with STSFC. This one also handles the CRS. Um, next to that, create an attribute data frame and combine those two into an SF object with STSF. So that's how you can build up um, manually. So let's do that. It's in the book as well. Uh, ST points, uh, we pass, uh, it always needs just uh, a vector of length two. Uh, so we have two points here. It's displayed like this when you print them. Um, uh, another uh, application, it is to make a set of points of so the multi-point object. So we have a matrix of coordinates, which we created here, which is just base R, uh, it's a numeric uh, matrix. And then we can pass it to ST multipoint and it is recognized and it will uh, print like this. So it's just uh, the set of uh, point coordinates. Um, according to the SF vignette, so a polygon is a geometry with the positive area and it's a sequence of points that form a closed non-self-intersecting ring. The first ring denotes the exterior ring and there are maybe other rings uh, that denote holes in the exterior ring, as uh, said already. Let's create that. So first we take points coordinates or create points uh, coordinates um, that denote the vertices of a polygon. So note that you should notice that the first and the last have the same coordinates. So it has to be closed. They have to uh, end in the same point as it uh, began, as it began with. Uh, let's create another ring uh, like this. It's another matrix. And then say, well, um, let's create a polygon composed of the list of these two. So we have an outer ring and an inner ring, which will be the whole. So the result is an, a polygon, which you can see here. We have the outer parentheses enclosing the rings um, separated by a comma which each contain sets of point coordinates. So it's very transparent. You can always um, build up or um, decompose into these single coordinate entities. Uh, so we have created a point, another point, a multi-point object and a polygon object. We can combine that even though these are Set or different um, geometry types, we can combine them into one SFC object. It's a, a geometry column. Um, it's an unspecified geometry type, so it says it's geometry. Um, and here we can see indeed the different uh, geometries printed. It is just a geometry column. Let's create one attribute um, with the same uh, number of rows as the number of geometries that we already created. And with, um, yeah, I have to scroll down here. So with the STSF um, function, we can combine the data frame and the geometry into this object, which is effectively the simple feature uh, collection. So here we can see what it is we, that we had created. So. Um, two points, this is the multi-point and this is the polygon object with the whole inside. So, um, yeah, okay. So this is uh, rather nice to play with. Um, so having created or read um, as an object, we can do quite a lot with them. Uh, there are just a few things in the book. There are whole books written on this topic. Um, so CRS relate, you can override or set the coordinates reference system, um, but you should never uh, override with the wrong coordinates reference system. It always has to be the coordinates reference system that the coordinates effectively belong to. You should normally only use this to set a coordinates reference system when the coordinate reference system is still missing. Um, when you want to um, convert or transform to 
another coordinates reference system, then which means um, transforming the coordinates themselves into other um, coordinates, then you have to use the ST transform function. And that was already handled in the previous chapter. Um, spatial operations, they comprise, well, in the book, it's especially these two, um, it's ST union and ST simplify, which are uh, discussed, but there are several more. Uh, ST union combines several SF objects into one, uh, ST simplify simplifies as F objects in terms of the vertices that are still kept because um, these SF objects can be quite big because of the many coordinates in there. And depending on the scale that you want to use or plot them, it's not needed that so many vertices are present. So the um, ST union uh, function, it, it's when applied to the NC object, it um, returns a single geometry set. I mean, a uh, one feature uh, geometry. So because all features are combined into one polygon. And it has the class SFC. So it is effectively the geometry column um, or geometry set which we can also directly plot um, with ggplot2, like it is shown here. So here we have the union's uh, simple feature. We can also simplify um, the NC objects and the D tolerance, it is a setting which, um, well, you can look into the um, documentation, but it's, uh, it it's, uh, determines the level of simplification. So here we have used 5,000 meters, 10,000, 15,000. So you, you see it. Um, yeah, it, it, here and there you have triangles or just rectangles. So it's uh, fun to play with actually. Um, I think with 50,000 or so, you just get two triangles, two big triangles. So they are also um, merged, I think, in some sense, in some way. Um, OK, there's in the um, geocomputation with our book, there is a bit more about spatial operations. Let's have a look just at the figure here. Uh, because we had discussed ST union, which just merges, um, but you can also make other um do or do other uh, operations just such as st intersection uh, st difference and so on which um well here uh, depicts uh, what is what is the result uh, of that then um binary logical operations so it's also based on a vignette it's used in the book but the, the vignette um, dives a bit deeper into it so first create some uh, objects that were created in that vignette so they are very simple objects it's uh, the x objects it's um well, it's a geometry set and a geometry column of three touching polygons so b0 1 and Two, and then the Y object, it's four overlapping polygons. So A0 to A3. So when they are plotted, you can see that this is the X object, the red one, and then the green object is uh, Y. And so the binary logical operations or also binary predicate function, they describe the topological relationship between two simple features. It is what we already have used when we did subsetting with uh, spatial criteria, with the OP uh, argument. Um, but these are functions in on their own. And when you apply them, like here, as the intersects uh, x and y, we will just use that uh, function here as the intersects. It's also used in the book. They either return a sparse matrix, which is the default, uh, so-called sparse geometry binary predicate, or a dense matrix. These are um a whole, a whole lot of uh, difficult words so just let's have a look what this does and it's uh, quite simple actually so as the intersects x and y it gives us a sparse matrix yes. 
what do we have? Um, it's a list, a kind of a list. It's special, it's SGBP, and it has a special print method, uh, which is shown here. So what we had, it was X, it was three polygons, and we had Y, so those, are, those were four polygons, and they, some of the green ones do indeed intersect. So the first three actually intersect, um, I don't know what it's called, the first one, but at least three of the four uh, intersect um, with X and one does not. And what is said here, so this is the first polygon of X, the second polygon of X, the third polygon of X. And this is because X is in the first position. Uh, and we have the first element and the third element of Y intersect the first polygon of X. Uh, and likewise for the other two polygons of X. So you get just uh, a list with the elements that intersect each element in turn of the first argument. So when we look at this uh, the structure, it, it's indeed it says it's a list and it has three elements and it's just numeric factors of um, indices for uh, the Y. Um, argument. So this is a sparse matrix indeed. Uh, when we look at the dense matrix by setting sparse to false, we just get uh, the full matrix of all combinations uh, to for, for the both. So x is here and y is there at the top, and we can see that it's just a normal matrix uh, with uh, for type logical. Well, but that is larger to store, so that is also why the sparse matrices are interesting to use. And there are uh, many more binary logical operations. It's also in the geocomputation with R book in an illustration, which is linked here. So, um, so we have uh, seen ST intersect, but you can also do touches, you can do overlaps, contains, covers, within, disjoint, um, which is displayed here uh, in a symbolic, symbolical way uh, to show what it uh, actually tests and which will result in uh, the true um, evaluation. So with such binary functions, uh, you can collect information about the topological relationship without making a spatially joined SF object, which is actually very efficient. Because in the case of joining SF objects, you really create new SF objects, uh, which have everything uh, in them. Um, ST join, in, in fact, it is not discussed in this, uh, in the book chapter. Uh, so it's uh, also not uh, shown here uh, in this presentation. So with the two examples of the book, uh, we can show how this works uh, to use the binary predicate function. So let's make another point sample with now with 100 uh, points as in the book, uh, and then um, see what ST intersects uh, returns uh, when we uh, intersect the North Carolina polygons with the NC points to uh, point data sets. So when we have a look at the results, it's a sparse geometry, binary predicate lists, so the sparse matrix of length 100, where the predicate was intersects. Okay, and the first 10 elements, they say, okay, so the length 100, it refers to the 100 counties, the simple features of the North Carolina data set, and some indeed are intersected, some are not, the empty, uh, some are intersected, and it says by which point they are intersected. And you can also see there's a polygon which is intersected by two points. So it contains all that information. But how to work with this? This is just a print method, uh, happily, because the so it's actually a list of numerics. Um, well, this this just shows how um, this, this looks like in in, um, in a plot. So uh, several. several um, polygons have multiple points, um, but how do we how do we use it? So, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So what we had here is the inter um, object, and then if we do length inter, it actually creates the vector of counts. So um, 
the vector of counts, which is um, where we when we have a look at because we add this at the count column of NC two. Here we can see that this vector of counts is indeed zero, one, sometimes two. This is how we can add the number of points to the polygons. Um, and this shows actually the resulting count variable as a, a color on the map. The second example in the book, it is identifying the NC polygons that contain points from NC points. So uh, selecting them, so to say. Um, for that, we will reverse the order of the two arguments. So here we get just 10, uh, well, I should also say I have now used the NC points, not the NC points two object that I have created. So this one just contained 10 points. So here we have all 10 points um, and paired with the single, of course, single county that they intersect. Um, so that's that. And we can unlist it, which will just return us um, a numeric factor of these numbers and use it to filter the North Carolina data sets. So these are the counties with a point in them. Um, and when we add dollar name, it will return us the vector of the names, which is in this SF object. And we can also um, combine this vector to the NC points object, which is actually what uh, was the aim of the chapter. Uh, and then that will give us with C bind, we can bind this columns, bind as columns. So we get a simple feature collection with 10 features and one field. So these, the, with the every name and the geometry. Um, this is a slightly other approach in the terms of how this is coded than in the book, but it is, um, yeah, quite similar, let us, let's say. It's, uh, it's uh, just a little bit more readable, I think. Um, okay, and then to close this uh, presentation, we have the final paragraph of the book about joining based on attributes. So uh, joining as objects based on attributes and we can just join, well, with join, joining in fact a data frame to an SF object is, which is being done. Um, these are just examples from an SF vignette in which we create an, uh, an SF object X. What is it? It's a point SF object with just two points and importantly, an attribute A. It numbers one, two, values one, two. And there's also um, a Y data frame, which has an attribute A and an attribute letter. It's, uh, and you have one overlapping value for A. So there's one, two here, but here it's two and three. So if you, you can join in, in several ways. So an inner join by A will just um, retain the single line of the simple feature uh, object um, with the matching value for A. And it has added the attributes from the Y data frame. In the left join approach, we will always keep all rows of the SF object X and join uh, attributes of Y where there's a match um, for the value of A. So we have all rows, but there is no match for value A. So we have a missing value there for a letter, but we still have all our points uh, that, that we started with. We can also use semi-join, which is actually an inner join without really um, joining the attributes, but just uh, reducing, so to say, the SF objects based on the join. So we, we just get a reduced uh, subset of uh, X in this case. So and that's it. So um, are there further questions? No, thank you. It was, you really go above and beyond. And especially when uh, you show about the polygons, I also tried making uh, polygons, but I didn't know that the first and the last uh, rows have to be the same to make it close. So I got a warning that I really don't understand. And yeah, um, what is your explanation now made a lot of sense to me. 
Okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah, in the vignettes of the SF package, there are quite a lot of simple examples uh, to do that show you in a very didactical way uh, how this all works. Yeah. Yeah, I really haven't looked into the SF package. I think I I, I really should look into the uh, their actual vignettes. Yeah. Yeah, here you have it for the logical operations, for example. But this, but that's um, there's a nice website of the SF package. Yeah. Um, with quite some articles um, that go in depth um, if you want to know more. Or there are also um, other books like Geo Computation with R and uh, the other one um, that I mentioned previous week. Uh, I think uh, last week there was some the other book. Um, it's, uh, it's the R Spatial book that uh, I always um struggle with its with its exact um, title spatial data science with applications in the world that's another um book that goes quite into depth uh with all the basic stuff uh, you could say and it also has uh, by the way some uh, statistical stuff in it right other questions If not, I think we can uh, stop the recording.